So with season one, one of the biggest changes was the accessibility of the other imbuements. Shadow imbuement and cold imbuement wasn't really useful all that much. You can use shadow imbuement for farming, but it doesn't really do that much damage, at least in season zero. But in season one, this has kind of changed because now all the builds have kind of shaken things up due to the barber, some nerfs to siphoning strikes, and a few other things. So I figured now is the time to go over and do a rogue speed farming tier list. I will be doing a push to 100 tier list. I plan on pushing to tier 100 with a couple of these builds. So we'll see how easy that is for each one of these builds. But starting off with the speed farming list, well, I've actually removed the D tier category. And honestly, we'll see by the end of this list if anyone ends up in C tier. I think I have another, a couple of options here. But the rogue builds out of any class in the game have probably the highest parity, meaning that the discrepancy towards the absolute top tier builds um, isn't as high compared to some other classes. Some other classes have real big stinkers of some builds, uh, and the rogue actually does a pretty good job of balancing it all. Starting off, though, I'm going to have to put Twisting Blades up in the S tier. I think everyone saw this one coming. Uh, I'm not going to talk too much about Twisting Blades. It's been, you know, hammered home, beaten to death over, you know, just an amazing, amazing skill. It synergizes super well with the Barber. Uh, you do have to change up your build a little bit because you can't really run like your traditional Poison Imbument uh, Destruction build because it doesn't really synergize with the Barber, uh, as well as Siphoning Strikes being nerfed, so your survivability is lower. However, the burst potential is absolutely broken with the Barber, and the amount of speed you can get from this build is absolutely insane. So I definitely recommend you trying this out. You can oftentimes hit one person with the Twisting Blades, which goes ahead and hits everyone, hit them all with the Barber, and they all detonate, and they all blow up. So like, now... It's basically a, just an insane AoE build due to the Barber, whereas beforehand, the Twisting Blades didn't necessarily have the greatest AoE. So it got a lot better with this season, uh, in my opinion, despite some of the nerfs to its core survivability. I think that in general, Twisting Blades is a little bit better than every other build. But there's another build on here that I've been really, really impressed with, and that is going to be the flurry option i'm actually going to put this behind just behind the twisting blades um, i find flurry to be really really solid i think that um, the apothecary heart is really really solid in using a lot of poison shadow cold i've seen triple imbuement builds i've also seen you know the flurry rapid fire option i think the flurry rapid fire especially with the changes coming next uh, couple days with the well i guess august 8th right so uh, in the week or so this build with the kind of rapid fire modification alongside flurry is going to be a lot better because they're going to raise the hp of bosses but for right now you know <laughs> you can run the triple imbuement you can also run the barber which has been really good for speed farming absolutely uh, honestly been really enjoying the flurry which is uh not something i would have said a little while ago Next up, though, I'm going to mix it up. Instead of going just to, like, you know, maybe some A and B tier builds, we're going to drop it down to C tier and drop Reign of Arrows in there. Um, Reign of Arrows has gotten uh, a kind of a semi-buff here with the knockdown and then the, you know, ability to use all those three imbuements on an AoE. You could say it might be, like, low B tier, but I'm going to start off with C tier because it's just... It still doesn't function quite how I want it to. Um, you know, if you're using the triple imbuement and you're using multiple imbuements in your build, well, that can be interesting, especially with like Word of Hakan, right? Um, I think that's like kind of the traditional build, triple imbuement. And that does synergize with the new Rogue Heart, right? Just like the Flurry build does. But the problem is, is that the damage is still low and the awkwardness of having to like not only rotate around your ultimate ability, which doesn't have any inherent CDR, uh, unless, you know, you're running some specific combination of like prep, plus uh, some sort of modification on your gear, like um, cooldown reduction, that could work, right? But those have been nerfed. So honestly, the nerfs to like the stats 
really hurt this build. If you compare this to like the Trapper build, the Trapper build has options to actually reset the skill almost instantly, whereas the Reign of Arrows build doesn't really have that as much. And that's the big problem. Speaking of the Trapper build, it's going to end up in A tier. It's a little disappointing because, well, I think that the Trapper build is almost to S tier. And I actually think it's better than it was last season relatively to the competition and where you're at um, in terms of like, farming the different levels of nightmare dungeons because of the amount of cc because of the hearts that you have available especially the one that lucky hit procs drops stun grenades that could be so insane for permanently ccing and i've done a video on this i think trapper build is super good the problem with it or i guess you could say, could say isn't really a problem the fact that the barber is so disgusting and some of the builds can utilize that a little bit better makes the trapper build less good in comparison to those ones what i will say about the trapper build is that even though it's not quite as fast because well you're not getting quite as much aoe out which is kind of surprising because that was kind of what the build was meant to do you're still way more survivable and honestly you can push up a little bit further because of that so if you're struggling on that aspect the trapper build still absolutely amazing Next up, I'm going to have to put Barrage. Barrage has been really, really good. Um, oh, man. Is it ahead of Trapper? I think I think it's still behind Trapper, but Barrage has been very, very solid. Once again, another build that people have been really liking, the Cold Imbuement and Shadow Imbuement. Uh, honestly, Barrage is not one that I've dove too much into this season, but what I've seen it be capable of, well, it's really solid for speed clearing. Once again, um, you're going to be able to crush through packs very, very quickly. If you decide to jump into the Barber, then you're going to have the massive AoE, which is really, really good. Because keep in mind that Barrage isn't actually an AoE skill. It's more of like a shotgun to one enemy. You get really close to the enemy, you burst them down. So it's single target damage is actually really good. Comparable to, you know, like Rapid Fire, Twisting Blades, and those situations. Maybe even more in some situations, but... With the Barber, you can even get more AoE out of it, and you have really, really nice options. So, to me, B tier or A tier build here with the Barrage. Next up, we're going to put Rapid Fire. Now, Rapid Fire gets better as the game goes longer into the higher Nightmare tiers. Rapid Fire, however, isn't as good of a farming build, unfortunately. And the main reason for this is, well, Rapid Fire has never really been an amazing farming build. You do run the barber, and I mentioned that a lot in this video. You can kind of fix some of the uh, speed farming issues, which is why it's a little bit better this season. But still, you're going to find that it's a little bit slower. And keep in mind, when I say that it's B tier, because I know some people are like, oh my goodness, rapid fire is B tier. First off, we're talking about the speed clearing of Nightmare Dungeons. Um, that, you know, you're going through and you're, you're getting your gear up and all that type of stuff. You're farming builds, essentially. And also... The Rogue is very, very close in its builds, okay? The difference between S and A is, you know, a good amount. Like, it's not, oh, these builds are just, just as good as and just as fast as these ones, typically. It, but it's not like, oh my goodness, like, it's A tier or it's B tier. This is not going to be good. <laughs> B tier Rogue builds are still oftentimes just better than, like, the majority of other builds in the entire game that you can use. Even some of the best builds that other classes have still are on the par uh, parody of rapid fire rogue a uh, first speed clearing which should say something about the rogue and how well rounded comparatively their builds are to other classes and that brings me to penetrating shot penetrating shot's going to end up in b tier as well and i think uh penetrating shot ends up uh, in b tier mainly because of the kind of awkward playstyle there are some options that i've seen some people and uh, some people have messaged me their builds about you know various different skills but uh, you know I, i'm going to be testing out more penetrating shot versions but the traditional penetrating shot option where you know you're running through and you're just clearing normally isn't quite as i could say miserable i i didn't enjoy the the penetrating shot build last season because it felt slow um i wanted to play the ranger kind of roll if you wanted to play the penetrating shot and that's kind of what i was going for and honestly that's just not as fun for me especially since well a lot of the things with the rogue synergize with that melee form however you can play as a melee penetrating shot rogue build which i have done 
And especially with the Barber, it ends up being a lot better. The AOE is way solid. The amount of single target damage actually that you're pumping out with penetrating shots really good. So it's a really cool thing that you can do with this because it's just one shot and that's it. You don't have to like wait for the rapid fire to channel. You don't have to wait for the barrage to channel. You don't have to wait for the twisting blades pull back to explode. You can actually just jump into a group, pull, bust out your penetrating shot one shot, and it just detonates everything because of the barber, which has been really, really cool for me. But again, a lot of people tend to steer towards the imbuements. I found the imbuements to be absolutely amazing there's some builds that are really good with the imbuements and there's some builds that just feel more clean with the barber i'll say as you start pushing i think that a lot of people steer towards you know using the imbuements a little bit more because they offer sometimes more utility like the cold imbuement for example ends up freezing people shilling people more often unless you're running the penitent greaves which actually i've been running penitent greaves on almost every rogue build because of the frigid finesse passive and also some of the synergies it has with the CC aspects. So super, super awesome there. But you have a lot of potential with the penetrating shot build, especially with the Barber uh, inside the game. So those are going to be my kind of early season one rankings as we develop the builds, as they start to jump in with the patch notes. If they decide to change the Barber, if they decide to change all these different things, this could change as we go forward. So I'll leave this for here. Uh, for now and i will also be coming out with a tier 100 push tier list where you're actually pushing at nightmare dungeons rather than farming you know 60s 70s 80s or even like 40s 50s etc you know so let me know what you think in the comment section down below are you thinking of a build that i did not put on this list i'm kind of taking the seven most popular options that i've seen uh, and i believe that there are a lot of other options that i've even experimented with but overall you know these since these are the most popular, I decided to use these. Maybe for the next time, if anyone has any suggestions in the comments, let me know and I'll add it to the next version of this, as well as just, hey, maybe I'm sleeping on a build that you think is absolutely amazing and you might be right. That's kind of the point of these videos. <laughs> Share my opinion and hear everyone else's. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all for the next one.